let's go so we're doing a max johnson film study on his red zone capabilities and obviously we're going to start off with to me the prettiest throw from any lsu quarterback in 2020 look at this floater in the back left corner to Jare freaking jenkins okay and you better put some respect on Jare Jenkins' name. So today we're going to talk about the good and the bad of Max Jones, Max Jones, Max Johnson in the extended red zone. And uh, look at Jare. Go on ahead, baby. Get you a little gritty, baby. There's B Big Bad Brad, TikTok superstar with Mama Johnson. I love it, man. So yeah, so obviously this is a great throw for Max Johnson in the red zone. And then we also have some not so great throws. So we're going to Take a look at this from so many different angles. And, you know, look, you get a play action fake here. And I want you to see where Max Johnson actually decides to throw this football. And I wish we would have seen more of this from him. Okay, so it's early in the game. And look at this. I want you to take a look at this right here. Okay, right now is when Max Johnson is deciding to throw this football. All right, look. Florida has this boxed in, but because Max Johnson trusts Dre Jenkins' speed to get to the back corner of the end zone, he anticipates this, and let's just rewind it just a little bit. Cole Taylor, who had a rough blocking game overall, wasn't his absolute best here, but this is decent. Max Johnson does a good job just stopping here to give himself room to throw this football, but the fact that right now, he is deciding that he's going to throw this football to Jare Jenkins shows you Max Johnson's ability to process information as a true freshman. And here's the thing. He actually got way too tentative after this. I, I wish he would have trusted himself to make reads like this a little bit more. And right when he's getting hit, okay, he floats this ball beautifully in the back corner. I mean, look at that. That is unfreaking believable And uh, th that's the thing. I want to see Max Johnson play with this same type of swagger, this same type of confidence, because... Alrighty, so we're going to run this play here, and I want you to remember this play, because LSU tries to go back to it at a future two-point conversion attempt. So Trade Palmer's in motion here, and Max Johnson does a good job here, seeing that once he sees that this contain is broken... He trusts his speed on a nice dry surface here to just get to the pylon, which is smart, right? And he ended up getting there. Okay, now he barely got in there, but he did get in there, okay? And, and of course, you'll take this every single time, and that's good, okay? Now, here's the thing, all right? Would you have rather Max Johnson to trust his speed here? Obviously, he got there, which was the right decision. But you also see right here, shout out one team right here. It's kind of hard to see, but this is Kayshawn wide open in the back of the end zone. So Max Johnson does the right thing. He sees it, okay? But the ball has to come out right now, okay? Because there's no guarantee that you're going to make this guy miss. All right? So he sees it. Kayshawn on this out route. Max actually hit this exact route in the Ole Miss game. We showed it to you yesterday. And you just got to hit it. You just got to throw it right now. Okay? But this corner blitz delayed. More often than not, this guy's going to sack you. Just a good job right here by Max. So even though he throws late, he does eventually get it out. But here's the thing. You notice it was almost batted down, potentially picked, right? Third and five. Once again, you know that you have two downs to complete this. Really good quarterbacking here by Max. Decent protection this time. Good job picking this up right here by Chase and Hines. And this is just good. He didn't force anything. All right. He could have thrown here to Terrace. Still hit this underneath. Buddy Johnson makes a good tackle. Max Johnson, red zone film study. Who's having a good time? And you see, Texas A&M brings the same type of delayed blitz here. And we're actually going to bring this one back. Max overthrows Ty Davis Price, but it makes sense because he's getting hit. 
Okay, so let's bring it back. I hope you're still with me. Let me know if you're still with me, okay? And let me know if you like this type of content. Make sure you subscribe because I obviously need your support this season. So they bring this corner blitz, and Max gets the uh, unlucky uh, low snap. So it kind of ruins your timing just a little bit, but he is sitting in this pocket, and after the bad snap, it did not help that Liam Shanahan is getting blown back into Max Johnson, so he can't really step into this throw, but here's the thing. Boom. Still needs to be delivered right there to Terrace Marshall. He gets gun shy here, afraid this guy will break off and potentially pick it, but there's so much separation created here by Terrace Marshall. And you see Max is waiting. Step in and fire this. Okay? He doesn't. And then eventually this corner blitz is coming hot. He does a good job seeing it and seeing a wide open TDP. But it's just too violent. And Liam once again getting blown back into this. Kind of forces a bad throw here. As does this hitter. And the hitter actually hit his elbow and he overthrows it. Uh, nothing against Jason Hines. All right? it, it honestly isn't personal. I'm just shocked that the LSU coaching staff never made a move. Uh, until the end of the year where Jason Hines hurt himself. And, uh, you know, LSU had to go to a different option and Cam Wire, and he was way better. So, Chase Hines gets beaten. Should have been a hold. Um, either way, even if you're getting beat right here, you, you, you still want to step into this, make this guy miss and step up into this space. This is the last thing we want right here. Is this... Mechanics are all off, and Max had been getting killed just in the little bit he'd been playing. He took some really hard hits, so that kind of sinks in your subjective. But I want you to see what happens to this throw. It is high, it's deflected, and it should have been picked. Okay? Okay? Good protection here, and this is really good quarterbacking here by Max Johnson. Okay? Okay? Delivers this ball to Eric Gilbert, basically in stride. And AG2 makes a few plays. I'm not going to let you see this ridiculous run after the catch uh, because it's a sore subject, but that was a good job by Max making that throw. All right? And this is, again, a good read. Eric Gilbert's on fire. He draws the double coverage. Max sees it. Throws this ball right on the money. Right here to Terrace Marshall. His last touchdown as a Tiger. And, of course, Terrace's last catch was a touchdown, one of the greatest of all time. Like a good defensive coordinator would do, Nick Saban saw the Texas A&M film, and they saw that this essentially worked against Max Johnson. What do they do? They bring a layered, delayed blitz from the slot corner or from a corner in general. Okay? So let's see how we pick this up. And this guy falls back into coverage. Okay, and this is actually decent protection. It doesn't look like it. Their guys are surging our guys, obviously, giving up a little too much ground. But this is Max, once again, playing off his back leg, all right? There's two things that he can do better here, all right? So step up into this and run, all right? See that? Look at all that space you can run. This is actually good stuff on 3rd and 12. This is two down territory. Once again, that was the point of the film study yesterday. Step up, though. Don't throw off your back leg. And by throwing off your back leg, it forces you to throw this ball late and behind Jure. He does a good job getting two hands on it. But once again, it's just an easy pass breakup. Once again, it's a spin move. They're bringing this corner blitz Good job by John Emery right here, okay? I know we did a thing on his rough pass protection. This was really good right here. So he was running out on a route, or he was looking for someone to pick up. He sees this corner. He sees this space. That's good. This is really good stuff here. We have perfect protection. The one place we don't want you to roll out here is this way. He is... And once again, the spin move is good if a guy is coming unblocked and coming hot. It's hard to sack a guy when he does this. But look look at all this room. We want you to roll out 
this way. This is where all your routes are going. But we roll out this way against their best athlete. We get away with the hold there, but that's not on Austin Deculus. Instead, we do this. We're lucky you were barely outside the tackle box, and we avoid an intentional grounding. But he spun in the direction, as you see, where no routes were running. We go to second down. And that could have been an easy run. So they're still bringing these layered, delayed corner blitzes. Okay? Good job by Max sitting in the pocket and delivering a strike here. Okay? Koi's a really good player. I really like Koi a lot. You've got to keep your feet here, though. He leaves his feet way too often. It happened against Florida. You guys saw that film study earlier this week. Got to keep your feet here, and that cost us 5, 10 yards in a first down. So we go here, and one strength of Max Johnson, QB sneak game. Really good QB sneaker, okay? I like his physicality. So we get a play action fake here. First and 10, and Dare Rosenthal just misses, and we just got to throw this away. Good stuff. Well, not good stuff, but good stuff by Max. Doing that. Now, this was just a freak play right here, okay, where Cavantre Bradford picks up Baton Rouge native Christopher Allen on a blitz. Okay, so he picks up this A-gapper. We keep our running back in to protect, and we flip him. But notice how quickly he flips right back up, okay? Got to hit him right here. But I'm glad he didn't throw it because number 40 actually dropped back into a zone blitz here. So the, sometimes you just got to tip your hat to the other defensive coordinator, right? They call the perfect blitz. They have a freak athlete who's able to flip up. We do get a whiff here. Ah, Ed Ingram. This is not good. He whiffs 47. That's a bad miss. So now it's third and 16. And we actually broke this play down yesterday in the check down. All right. This is really good quarterback IQ from Max Johnson. And this was, uh, there was a play against Texas A&M. Once again, it was in the film study from yesterday where it's, it, he was trying to get all the yards on a third and 17 when he should have just hit an underneath route. This is good stuff right here by Max. Understanding the situation. You're in four down territory. You're down by a lot. Hit your underneath. And Coy, uh, Coy. Kayshawn was able to get down and... And um, and make this a one-yard situation. Okay, once again, good QB sneak here by Max. We pick up the first down. And now we're rolling. All right, so you know at this point that they're going to keep bringing these blitzes. And this time, we pick it up really well. And we make a good throw here on first down. Good stuff. Kayshawn, nasty finish. So we're going to quickly wrap this thing on up here with a few more plays to finish out this drive. Really quickly, you, you notice LSU, with especially with Max at quarterback, they did a lot of these pre-snap drag type of motions here behind the line of scrimmage. Play action, you leave this guy unblocked. This is really good ball skills by Max Johnson. Once again, to make this guy miss and throw the ball to Eric Gilbert's outside, Good job by 40 to chase him down. We almost score here. Um, you know, LSU is going to have to make a philosophical, you know, choice here on whether or not they're going to do more of this. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it just simply didn't. Remember that one Auburn play we showed you. Uh, we got Kayshawn wide open in the back of the end zone. And this time, off this bootleg action... Okay, we got a little bit of a bobble here on the ball handling, which is unusual for Max. That's normally one of the better things, the ball handling aspect, the turnover or lack thereof of turnovers. 
So we get a little bit of a bobble, which really affects the timing of this play. But once again, we got an unblocked guy trying to get Eric Gilbert on this action right here. But really, one thing that LSU could see on film here is that for the second time, we get Kayshawn open in the back of the end zone here with nobody back there, and that throw would have been there if Max would have just stopped and popped. Now, once again, that's really tough off a of bobble, and this guy coming hot, um, it's just tough. And you notice here, Max is on his back leg. We're almost giving up a sack, and the fact that he even got this off is amazing. They actually timed this blitz perfect. Good job, Austin Deculus, letting the outside guy go free on a short route like this. But this is why I don't like fades because, uh, you know, there's just so much that needs to go right. And actually, this throw on the fade was not bad. It's just Patrick Sertan is just a really good football player. But when you come back here, you see, boom, John Trey's open right there. So, you know, it's just one of those things where I, uh, am I, uh, I just don't like fades. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, fades, don't do them. Uh, this was fun. Uh, obviously, this was the Auburn, Alabama, and Texas A&M game. These were Max's first few games, and it's always kind of tough to get your rhythm when you aren't the starter. So what we're going to do is, obviously, we are going to look at more of the Florida game and, obviously, the Ole Miss game which was Max's roughest red zone game, and see how he could potentially grow from those games. He was just a true freshman in this game, oftentimes throwing the football to other true freshmen. So obviously there is so much to like and learn and see from Max Johnson, but there's also a lot of room to grow. Now, obviously, uh, comment down below. Do you think Max Johnson can be an All SEC quarterback, or will he be an All SEC but the All SEC quarterback next season? And uh, yeah, let's let's get excited. I'm starting to get more excited about Max Johnson being the for sure QB one. It is power hour LSU boom. I think we're doing burgers tonight. Let's go.